Oh, wow. Welcome to Tele Creations. In this video, we're going to be talking about my The Thing set. Uh, weirdly, I know I just did a, f a video about The Thing because I had a German set come in, so I, there's a big video on that which details everything I got in that set. But this is, I want to talk about all three versions of the film that I currently own, starting, of course, with the classic The Thing from Another World. This is the Warner uh, Bros. Archive collection version, the Howard Hawks production, the literally titled The Thing from Another World. Uh, how do I even detail this film? Pretty much uh, Air Force people are in Alaska. Uh, they get a call that there is something going on at the laboratory facility a bit further up north in the more Antarctic area, whatever, the Arctic area. Arctic, obviously. Antarctic is below. And so... They go to check it out because they hear that it's some kind of a plane crash of some kind of detail. They meet everyone there. A lot of cast, a lot of crew. Oh, look, our, our main character here who's at the airport, F, F, F cadet dude, seems to, who's in control of a lot of the people there, seems to have had some kind of a romance with this girl that didn't really work out. But maybe, hey, maybe that means things could happen again. Sparks are flying here. But hey, look, Mr. Scientist Man says we got to go check this thingy out. So they go for a ride in a helicopter. They find a big disc that they all stand in a circle around. They're like, hot diggity daffodil. Look at this thing. It's big. Uh, let's now use thermites to melt the ice around there. Oops, look, we blew it up. <laughs> but then, of course, they find a body, you know, frozen in the ice. Something that might be humanoid, but they can't really tell. They bring it back to the base. They accidentally melt it. You know, as you do. And it turns out to be a big humanoid plant creature thingy that attacks and kills. Now, of course, standard approach, a lot of talking, a lot of quick talking. Like, these people will literally talk and literally talk over each other. Like, one person will talk, they won't even get to the end of their sentence before someone else says, Hey, but then with this, da, 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 and it just keeps on going. And it's like, oh my god, I get it. There's a lot of people talking right now. This is crazy. It's a classic Howard Hawks film. A lot of a lot of that kind of fast firing dialogue, hippity hoppity, they're going for it like crazy. You think I talk fast? These people talk faster. Eighty seven minutes, baby. You gotta get it in there. So a lot of the time is spent with the characters, especially the dichotomy between the Air Force, who like to keep things more secret and down low. Uh, you've got your newsman who wants to like broadcast this all out and whatever, get permission to tell the world that UFOs are real, aliens are real. And this scientist who wants to study uh, the creature wants to make peace. But before you know it, the uh, creature starts killing. And it apparently uses human blood to regenerate itself. And they, you know, take a sample. They end up lobbing off one of its arms. More or less the, 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 the wolves outside do it. The uh, snow wolves? I don't know what they call it. Um, but they have a bunch of, you know, s snow sled dogs and whatever that... Terror, they have a fight with it, they get its arm, they realise it's part of it, it is like a plant and it can move autonomously. And so it just kind of expels from there from we gotta stop and kill the creature to save the whole world. That can, well, at least to save themselves, especially because you know they're in the Arctic and whatever, and the bloody thing keeps turning off the heat and everything. It's a smart creature. It's big, it's tall, it's clearly a man in a big rubber suit, <laughs> which is mostly fire retardant. So that's fun. They've got to figure out a way to destroy it, all that kind of jazz. It's a fun film. It definitely takes its time, but then one of the, you know, this, the creature's only in a few scenes, and I don't really mind that, because again, it's your classic 50s kind of creature. It's just a dude in a suit. It's fine. So it's pretty fun. It's something different. It's something nice. You know, hey, look, it's a plant creature from another world, feeds in human blood, all that kind of stuff. We have to, you know, get the message out to watch the skies. UFOs are real. Aliens are going to come and kill us all if we're not careful. And, of course, given that most of the people watching this film are, uh, you know, gun-toting Americans, it makes sense. I know it's the 50s, but gun-toting Americans were still a thing then. And so, yeah. It's a fun little film. This is a cute little, you know, set that just comes of the film. I don't believe it has any special features. It's pretty much just watch the movie because that's what a lot of these um, archive collection ones are. I have a few of them. Uh, ones about those kids where they are all the same. <sighs> what the fuck was that movie called? 
the Village of the Damned, or whatever it is, you know, Children, no, I think Children of the Damned is a sequel, uh, but Village of the Damned, the original, um, I have one of those in this same kind of a set for the archive collection. It just comes with a film. It's a nice film print. Kind of, it's remastered enough, obviously for an old film. It still looks pretty good, so that's it's nice. So it's a nice little thing to have. Quick, eighty-seven minute long film. All the fun stuff, and from Howard Hawks as well, who co he produced it, but also kind of kind of co-directed it as well. Like it suggests that he was just a producer, but. Clearly, even though Christian Eby is, like, the listed director, him and Hawks obviously have worked a lot together because Hawks is that kind of a dick. Uh, very, you know, heavy-handed with how he did his films. And a lot of them are good films, but still. Let's, of course, move on to... From 1951 to 1982. We have... The Thing... This is, of course, the Arrow 4K remaster release of the John Carpenter classic. This is actually the reversible sleeve, because the original sleeve has alternate artwork, which you can kind of see there. Nevertheless, I don't really mind the, uh, that artwork. It does obviously come with a bigger set, which I do not currently have. I was very disappointed by that. I was expecting to get this in the bigger set. It did not come in the bigger set, probably because when I ordered this, I ordered it like a year or so after it had actually been re-released. In fact, I think I ordered this... Actually, no, I did order this a year after it had been released, so I only got this standard edition version, which is fine. So it comes with a reversible sleeve. I like it. It's nice. Of course, Arrow Video has done a steelbook version as well, the same artwork, but I figured because I already have reversible sleeve artwork, I don't really need to get that. And Scream Factory has also done a release, which I was meant to get as a steelbook, but the seller may have caught the COVID, so that, that kind of fell through. Uh, thanks, America. Um, so anyway, that led me on to better things, which I will get to in a second. So... What, what can I say about The Thing? If you don't know what John Carpenter's The Thing is, then you should watch it. It's really fucking good. But in the general sense, it's a bunch of people who are in the... Where are they again? Are they still in the Arctic, or is it the Antarctic this time? I believe it's the Antarctic this time. And they, you know, they're uh, invaded by a uh, wolf, again, who's been hunted by people in a helicopter who then proceed to crash. They take care of the dog. Dog turns out to be a shape-shifting alien. You know, just regular stuff that you find in the Antarctic. And yada, 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 they find the spaceship. Oh, look, we we got to kill this creature. He's fire. It's turning into people. So obviously it's taken the original approach of the isolated base. In this case, not being a military base, just being a research outpost. And then, of course, you introduce something different. A shape-shifting alien. And it's amazing. This is a beautiful remaster. I'd love to get a 4K UHD if that ever comes out, but the 4K remaster from the original negative is exceptional. And then, of course, I've got my big boy. Um, I also have a The Thing t-shirt, which I'm not currently wearing right now, so I apologize for that. I'm pretty sure I already said that, but I can't remember. I did film this before and then realized the camera wasn't rolling, so I had to film it again. It's fun. In 2019, there was a release by Turbine. They made two sets, and this is one of them. This is another one of those classic big-ass limited edition sets, uh, which does say John Carpenter's The Thing, rather than saying that it has both versions of The Thing and the prequel. This is limited of number 363 of 2000 as it says on the piece of paper there uh, and as you can see there it comes with the set it comes with a slip out fold out which comes with three discs a bunch of special features which I believe includes all the special features on the screen factory release so I don't really need to get that unless I just want to get it for the steelbook value and it is a really nice steelbook with the artwork because it's a big like li lithograph that expands out um, uh, when you fold out the steelbook however I can buy that as an individual print and appreciate it more, I think. Uh, it also comes with a 
two posters, one being the original, uh, and it comes with a whole bunch of other stuff. You've got a little Outpost 31 deal, you've got the soundtrack, you've got posters and posters and books. You've got two books, one's the actual novel uh, in German. Uh, I should notice, all this is in German, um, except for the posters, only one poster is in German. Uh, and then it has the original book that it was written on, the Who Goes There, in German, unfortunately, and it has an inside the thing, which is a making of the thing and the prequel. It does come with the prequel on Blu-ray. I've only watched a pirated version of that film anyway, and I don't plan to watch it again anytime soon, but I did review it for my Mary Elizabeth Winston review. Now, I could go into more detail about this set right now, but I do have a whole entire video, so I'm not going to waste my time on doing that. If you want to check it out, there will be a video linked at the end of this video and in the description. Uh, so you can just skip to that if you want to for now, but I'm mostly going to talk about the prequel right now. Um, so, the prequel is an interesting film. So, again, like I had said, I thought that all three films were in some kind of chronology of story. Obviously, that is incorrect. But the prequel is actually a film that takes place before the John Carpenter film, which makes sense, because it's called a prequel. Despite it being filmed 30 years later in... Maybe it's because it had been 30 years between each film, and they were like, hey, let's make another The Thing film. But it's like, yeah, but John Carpenter was so good. It's like, but we could do a prequel, which explains what happens to the military base, the Norwegian base, just before um, when they discover The Thing and when they all get murdered brutally. What happens? Maybe we could talk about that, give more of an explanation to The Thing itself. And so they do. They introduced two American characters, uh, one played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, one played by Joel Edgerton, who is an Australian. And so, an Australian actor, but an Australian character, I don't believe. And so they, you know, they're tasked as uh, genetic researchers. Well, he, I don't know what the hell he is. He's some kind of, I don't know, he's like representat representative or something. She is the military, She she's the uh, the researcher, the geneticist or whatever. They go together to the Antarctic, meet all the Norwegians. There's a lot of people here. At least 20 other dudes and a f maybe two different women. So it's uh, very similar to the original, uh, which is an interesting factor now that I've been able to think about that. And the uh, same deal happens. They f have found this, uh, they find the spaceship. I don't remember how they find the spaceship. I think, oh no, they they run into it by accident, it's literally the opening scene of the film. They, they're they following a Geiger counter, and then the ice cracks below them and their car falls in, but then they realise that it's because the ice on top of the spaceship was very thin, and so they're able to dig out a lot of the spaceship, and they find a creature that has escaped the spaceship that's in a very weird form. So they dig that out, they bring it back to the outpost, it slowly drips, and of course... The thing explodes through the roof and runs away. They go on a hunt for it, and it starts, and it kills someone and starts dissecting it. And we begin to realize, of course, that this is a shape shifting alien creature. You know, yada yada yada, get through all the people getting killed and all that kind of stuff. Got to introduce new ways to find out who's the uh, creature and who isn't. Stuff that doesn't contradict the sequel and all this kind of stuff, but stuff that also works in tandem with the sequel and all this stuff here and there and whatever. There's a lot of different details, including one being an axe getting lobbed into a wall to chop up the thing, and then the main character goes to grab it. No, one Joel Edgerton's character goes to grab it, and the main character's like, no, no, leave it there. It could be infected, you know, because it's like, well, it needs to be there, otherwise in 30 years' time, <laughs> you know, otherwise when the sequel takes place, it wouldn't make any sense. So, anyway, that happens. Um, they have a lot of those things, especially one where... A character kills themselves, and in that one, they like slit their wrists, and the blood is like frozen out of them, and whatever. And I think you see them go to kill themselves, and that's about it because they know the thing is coming. They're like, I don't want to get killed by that thing, which makes sense. Final act, you get to. Sorry if I'm spoiling this film, but it is uh, 10 years old by now, so. Um, you know, final act, you get our main two characters. 
Uh, one of them may be the thing, probably Joel Edgerton, maybe, probably. Mary Elizabeth Winstead goes and follows him to the spaceship, because obviously the crew, the thing wants to get, wants to take off, wants to leave, or whatever. Maybe find the cities, maybe spread itself, however it be. As long as it's out of the cold, who cares? Yeah, you get a kind of final confrontation in the spaceship, which leads to them blowing up the spaceship to some degree, and Mary Elizabeth's character kind of just driving off into the, into you know, the wilderness, probably just to die, because there's no no one nearby, and that's how it be, but of course we do get that climactic scene, which leads into the original, with the dog being hunted, so at least now you know all these characters, you know how it all goes, and all that kind of stuff. Of course, there are a little bit of iffy stuff in, this, in the prequel, with the CGI and whatever that was taken over, on top of wonderful practical effects, which of course you can do a lot of research into on YouTube to see how that went down. And it's... I do think that the CGI takes away from a lot of it. The uh, practical effects would have probably been amazing. I, I still find it ironic how the producers had said that it looks too much like an 80s film, so we got to put in the CGI. Yet a few years later, the 80s resurgence was so big so it's like, if only the film had have come out two to three years later, like, it probably wouldn't have had the cast that it had, it probably wouldn't have had Mary Elizabeth Winstead, but it's like, I don't particularly mind that aspect, like, she is one of the only really enjoyable characters, she's the only enjoyable character in the film, everyone else is fine as an actor, but like, yeah, it's just, it just makes you think how, if it had just come out a few years later, even if they had have done it, still went the CGI route to some degree to advance some elements of it, which they were planning to do it to some degree. It would have obviously looked better, but they still could have emphasized the practical. Like, come on, when 20, 2015 you had, a, what is it, Star Wars, and that really emphasized practical. So four years later, they could have done something really good. You know, they would have been like, people still want to see this practical stuff. And it could have come out, everyone would have been like, yeah, this is actually much better. Well, it couldn't be much better. You don't, you got can't compare it to its previous self. So it's just if out of way to the few more years, it probably would have been fine. But I don't know. Twenty eleven. I guess that's a year for making weird films or bad films. I don't know. I can't remember what films came out in twenty eleven. So anyway, that is my the thing collection. Besides the lack of a t-shirt. Uh, yeah, there's not much else for me to say on the films. I think they're all pretty good. I mean, the prequel is obviously, I think, the most lacking one overall. But I do obviously really love the John Carpenter one. And I do really like the Howard Hawks one. It's pretty fun. Again, just a kind of gimmick, goofy little 50s film. It makes sense for what it is. So, if you haven't seen these films, feel free to check them out. If you haven't seen my video talking about the, the Thing limited edition set... It will be linked down below and in the end screen. And that will be all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. What do you think about the thing? Have you got any of these or a different set? Do you think the Screen Factory one is good? Do you have a favourite of the three films? Do you think that the prequel was always a waste of time? What do you think? Give me your thoughts and opinions down there in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time. Adios. Wee.